All right, Chicago, we are back. Man, it's time for us to head into the second round of the year two playoffs with your Chicago Blackhawks. We managed to get by the Dallas Stars in six games in round number one. Uh, the players that, uh, the veteran players that we have, the players that we pay money to, Patrick Kane, uh, uh, Duncan Keith even, Sergei Bobrovsky, these guys really came through for us in round one. Patrick Kane started off slow, but in games five and six, he, uh, well, game six, he certainly came through. Two goals, three assists for five points in six games played. And that means we're off to round two to face off against the defending Stanley Cup champion Winnipeg Jets. So a tough team here against Winnipeg. We know that they simulate well. Uh, but this is year number two and we've already taken one of those blue liners, one of those right-handed blue liners in Tyler Myers last year at free agency. So let's see what they have on hand for their defense of the Stanley Cup run this season. So the first line, you have Blake Wheeler, Mark Shifley, and Patrick Laine. That's going to be an absolute filth line. What kind of season is Patrick Laine having? I just want to see what kind of goals he's putting up right here. 31 goals, 44 assists, 75 points. So he's certainly, I mean, he's taking shots. He could be taking a few more shots than that for Patrick Laine, but he's a legit 30-goal scorer in this game. And with guys like Shifley and Wheeler, he's also an assist man because those guys also score, I guess. So that first line is uh, it's rough. Gonna have to shut that thing down. Second line, you got Kyle Connor, uh, Brian Little, and Nikolai Ehlers. Pretty good. Brian Little, 82 overall. <coughs> Not the greatest, but the two wingers, Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers, definitely raise him up. Third line, you got Matthew Perot, uh, Jack Aroslovich, and uh, Nick Paton. 80, 80, 80 overall. All right, well, they have this, their studs up front. Pretty sure if they were to. Uh, like throw Blake Wheeler down in the second line and then Little down to the third line. They could get better depth. Seems like they're loading up with their talent in the top six. Bottom six, 380s. And then the fourth line, Lemieux, Lowry, and Jerko, 77, 79, and 77. I'm not going to write these players off. They can certainly be good defensive players. And uh, like I said, they won the Stanley Cup last year, so they're doing something right. So we got to watch out for that first line. Other than that... Other second line as well, yeah, Kyle Connor and Ehlers are no pushover at 87 and 88 overall. So they got five forwards that we have to watch out for, so their power play is going to be rough. The blue line, all right, so the blue line, Dustin by Fuglin, looks like he's got an injury. I don't know if that is a a legitimate injury that he has to, well, he, he wouldn't have to sit out Woody because he's still in the lineup right there. He's still in the... Uh, the first line right defenseman position. Normally, they don't let you put them in if they're injured. So I wonder if that's just a lingering injury right now for Dustin Bufflin. Playing alongside of Josh Morrissey. So an 84 and an 87 overall D, man. Not too shabby right there. Second line, you got Sammy and Niku and Dmitry Kolikov. This is where it really drops off. They don't have Jacob, Tr uh, Jacob Truba and uh, Tyler Myers anymore in their top four roles. They have to bring up Dmitry Kulikov, who's 77 overall. That's really not good and then their third line Logan Stanley and Tucker Pullman right I guess last year they had their big contracts they had to get Patrick Laine signed and now they have to bring up a 75 and a 71 overall blue liners with Dustin Bufflin injured I mean this could be the uh, advantage that we need here to beat them scratch players who do they have on the uh, the bench they got cop Ty Ratty and uh, Kristen Christian Veselainen so they don't even have any blue liners already upcoming. So if Dustin Bufflin is injured, man, that's a big one for us. So we got to come back there. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll simulate a day, I'll come back on game day and see what their lineups actually look like. But that's big for us, man. We have to be able to score goals. They're, they're going to be able to score on us. We got Bobrovsky in the net, but there's no reason why we can't score some goals on this team with that depleted blue line. So there's their power play. And goaltenders, Connor Hellebuck, yeah, 88 overall. Yeah, see, they still have Eric Comrie. So let me just... Uh, let me go ahead and simulate to the actual game day. Let's see if they get their lineup set. And then we can actually take a look at our lineups as well because Reed Boucher has returned from injury. So hang on. I should have done that before we started the video here. View lines. Hang on a sec. I need a drink as well. Let me just get this intro done. Uh, so we got... Oh, yeah, I was right. The Winnipeg Jets. There we go. All right, so Wheeler, Shifley, Line, A, Jerko, Roslovich, Paton, Perot, Lemieux. Yeah, that's all the same. What about defense? Dustin Bufflin. All right, so I, I, I'm going to assume that's a lingering injury. So get on Dustin Bufflin in game number one, boys, all right? Rough him up a little bit. And they still have Eric Comrie. That can't be right. As soon as the game starts, I think they're going to make those changes. So we'll keep an eye on uh, whether or not Dustin Bufflin is actually playing. And then we can go and take a 
look at your Chicago Blackhawks. We're going to leave the lines the exact same way they are. Alex Debrinkit, Nick Schmaltz, and Patrick Kane. Uh, Artemi Panarin, Jonathan Taves, and uh, Vladislav Ven and Nemestankdanov. Uh, Brendan Saad, Pajot, and Yarncrog. This is what I mean about our third line. We have a guy who's 84 down there. Uh, they have, yeah, they have the much better guns, the top five guns. Panarin and Kane are great, but then, you know, like, uh, like Wheeler and, and Kyle Connor and Ehlers, yeah, they're beating Emma Stankinoff, Schultz, and, uh, I'm not gonna say Debrinkit. I love Debrinkit with, uh, Patrick Kane, so I'm fine with that, but you can see their studs, but Brendan Saad on the third line gives us an advantage, and then our fourth line, I think, is also better, uh, better than their fourth line, so we'll see what that depth does for us. Uh, defensively, Duncan Keith, like I said, having a pretty good playoff so far. Four assists. Uh, Adam Bockvist. And then we have them covered, all right? I mean, they have uh, Dustin Bufflin, who I don't know if is going to make it or not. Uh, but after that, I mean, the bottom four, Ekholm, Yokoharju, Myers, and Pesci, absolutely destroys their blue line. So that's where we have that advantage. And then Sergei Bobrovsky. Like I said, during the... During the playoff simulation, the real-time simulation, you start to see the goaltender stats show off a lot more. And that save percentage, 935 so far. And that's exactly what we need. A team that's top-heavy, that can score some goals, but has a depleted blue line, this is going to be a shootout of a series. We need to aim for like four or five goals a game, baby. We can do it. So here it is. You know what? I'm going to go for a drink first. We'll be right back. Ah, uh, that's much better, boys. I was fighting back a cough there for like five minutes. So let's get into this. Round number two, year two, up against the defending Stanley Cup champions. We're on the road in Winnipeg for game number one. On the road, let's see if we can do some damage here and take one game uh, away from home. And also, in the first round, we didn't even have any overtime footage. So uh, we'll get into some real-time gameplay if it gets to the overtime frames. But for this, it's real-time simulation. So we just got to watch. So power play, I think I saw a power play for both teams there. Both penalty kills coming through, which is good for us. Got to rely on Sergei Bobrovsky. The better he does, the more confident I feel. And the first period, all right, so my prediction was wrong so far. I thought we'd see more of a shootout. First period, not a goal in sight. Power play early for the Winnipeg Jets. They go nowhere with it. 15 minutes left here in the second period. Who's going to be the first team to score here in the second round? Shots are 19 to 12 in favor of Winnipeg. Still nothing on the board. Connor Hellebuck and Sergei Bobrovsky are both playing fantastic right now. Look at that. Two periods into round number two and both teams yet to have scored. Now, we were only at half the total shots that they're at, 12 to five, 12 to 24. That's not looking good. This is exactly what I mean. We need to rely on uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. I thought we'd have to rely on him in like a 3-3 game in the third period. It's a 0-0 game. So here we go, ladies and gents. A third period underway. Who's got the dagger? Power play. It's a five on three. Come on. And Connor Hellebuck. I thought that depleted blue line wouldn't be good enough. But uh, Dustin Bufflin must be playing. Power play for Chicago. Can they get anything? No, they can't. Five minutes left. Are we going to see some overtime footage here, boys? Three minutes. Holy shit. Both goaltenders playing fantastically. And we are going to have a shutout in game number one. The question is... Which goaltender is going to get it? Is it going to be Sergei Bobrovsky for Chicago or Connor Hellebuck for the Winnipeg Jets? Boys, overtime. Let's go. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in Winnipeg for overtime. Game number one. So far, neither team able to score, man. 0-0. Zero, zero. Fourth frame here in round number two. Who's got the magic stick? Shifley. Out to the right side. He's going to sauce it down low behind the net. Ehler's going to pick that up. Back to Patrick Line. It was Wheeler, actually. Was that Vatanen on the point? Sammy Vatanen is on this team? What's their blue line looking like now? I didn't see that guy in the lineups. What the hell? Schmaltz, I got to go back and look at their lineups afterwards. Schmaltz over to Debrinkit. Debrinkit back to Duncan Keith. Bockfist! Oh, man. I wanted him to shoot. Wanted him to load out. Uh, Nick Schmaltz back to Bockfist. Bockfist showing confidence. Look at that. Into the middle. Debrinkit with a big howie. But a better save there by Connor Hell. By both goaltenders playing absolutely fantastic turnover there by Winnipeg, but they get it back. Here comes Morrissey. Oh, that's going to be an icing. Icing call. Get in there, boys. Get that quick line change. Keep the Winnipeg Jets out there. Patrick Kane leading his team in points. Still chewing on that licorice as he always does. As the whiteout here in Winnipeg. Hey, boys, they're cheering for us. We got the white jerseys on. Just imagine it. Come on, Jonathan Taze. Lose the faceoff after an icing call. Come on, Taser. That's what we need you for. Patrick Line. Hey, stop him. Stop him now. Oh, not like that. Don't stop him that way. 
Two minutes for tripping. Oh my god, Matthias Ekholm. How are you going to do that, my man? Ah, Patrick Lyon ain't flying in, and that's all off a face-off in the offensive zone after an icing. Jonathan Taves loses it. They go 200 feet, and now we've got to kill off a two-minute power play in overtime. I mean, geez, this is going to be rough. Oh, power face-off one. Niku from the point takes that shot. Good save, and Pesci. Brett Pesci's going to fling it down the ice. All right, the time's going uh, decently fast, I guess. We've killed off 20 seconds there. Oh, man, this is going to be so long. I don't know if we can get through it. Connor over to Niku, who's jumping up in the play. Jonathan Taves are... What are you doing? Taves! Oh, my God! What a turnover! And the Winnipeg Jets, they take game one. Captain Taves, my ass! EA Sports, what the fuck was that? Taves can't win the face-off in the offensive zone off, uh, off an icing. And then, what was that? He, all he had to do was get it out. And not only does he not get it out, he goes back. He cycles it back to the guy who's wide open in the slot. Oh, yeah, no wonder you got shitty instant replay camera angles, EA Sports. You don't want to show your players absolutely shit in the bed, screwing the pooch as the Winnipeg Jets are off to game two, up one nothing in the series after that. After that, well, you just knew it. With goaltenders playing like this, you just knew it was going to be a garbage goal to, to seal the deal. And Jonathan Taze with that. What the fuck was that, EA Sports? That is that is not even peewee hockey. All right, we're on the penalty kill. It's Jonathan Taze. There's one thing to do right there. Let's go back and watch this. All right, shot in the middle. It's a loose puck situation. Tyler Myers, he could have just flung it out to Taves. I mean, that's not a hard play right there. Any NHLer, I don't care if it's on his backhand. You simply sauce it up. Sauce it off the boards. Right, to your tw uh, right here towards that angle. You hit that blue line. It bounces back past the defenseman. No problem. But Jonathan Taves, a Selkie Trophy winning candidate. Uh, uh, one of the best defensive uh, centers. One of the top 100 players of all time. Take that, Geno Malkin. Look at this. He's going to go back. Oh, yeah, I'll make a pass. I'll make a pass right to him. That's a great pass. Goes back and then just absolutely. And he goes, he shoots at that side as well. It still, it still just goes in. Unbelievable. And that's how we're going to lose game number one. Oh, yay, sports. All right. So that is unfortunate to lose game number one, one nothing in overtime. Um, it's a game where Sergei Bobrovsky gave you a shutout and you couldn't even give him one goal. So a game where your goalie gives you a shutout performance and you don't win, now it's almost like, you know, we're due for a game where he doesn't play well. That's going to be a 2 nothing lead for them. So we're going to have to dig even deeper here. Our offense is going to have to steal a game, or uh, Sergei Bobrovsky is going to have to play like a 940 goaltender if we're going to stretch this thing long towards like a game 6 or game 7. So great job, offense, or lack thereof. You had a real opportunity there and you couldn't do anything. So you know what? I actually forgot to do this for game number one. Great. That could have been a difference maker down here. You know what? I take it back. We played good defensively, just didn't have the offense. So Hayden, even though you had a goal there in the first round, I'm taking you out for Reed Boucher. We're getting the sniper in there on the fourth line. We'll see if that uh, that depth of McGinn, Walmark, and Reed Boucher can do anything for us on the fourth line because we need to get some offense going here, all right? So, boys, let us continue the, the simulation of round number two here. Game two in Winnipeg. Come on, boys. All right, Luke, let's get some offense here. It's been four frames now. Uh, it wasn't too deep into overtime, but still four frames without a goal. This is the fifth one on the ice. Let's go, Chicago. Find the offense. Put it by Connor Hallibuck and get the monkey off your back. Get the momentum right in the, back in the right direction. This is ridiculous. There you go. Nick Schmaltz on the first line proves that Connor Hallibuck is only human. He's not an alien. He's a man. He's just a man. He bleeds like a man. All right, come on. Nick Schmaltz doing a good job. Three minutes left, two minutes left, and that is the first period. All right, so Sergei Bobrovsky, so far, I mean, it's, it's early in this series, but he has been a he, he's been a brick wall back there for us to start the game, which is good. All right, I, I thought this was going to be completely the other way. I thought this was going to be a shootout. I forgot to look at their blue line. Right, Sammy Votnin was in there. I got to go look at their blue line again after this. We'll just keep that up. Uh, or uh, try to remember that, because if Bufflin's in there and Votnin's in there, they do have a blue line, and that's scary. So here we go, second period, almost halfway through the game. The good news 
here is that we are out shooting them 18 to 14. They've come back a little bit, and there you go. Is that a uh, power play goal? No, I don't think it was. Five on five, and Alex Kopp is going to tie up the game for the Winnipeg Jets. They do kill off a penalty, Chicago, but the lack of offense again this is going to be an issue here, man. I mean, the, uh, the tight games Winnipeg is going to have... I don't know if they have the advantage, but if we're not like our 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 advantage here is our it's our goal scoring, it's our ability compared to that blue line. If it's a tight game, one of their five studs is always capable of getting a goal. Line a Shifley, Wheeler, Connor, uh, Ehlers, right? So this is I don't like this. I want to get ahead. Oh my God! Third period tied. What's gonna happen here? And it's an early goal for the Winnipeg Jets. Little the second line. I told you, man. At any time, I forgot. I named five of their top six forwards, and it's their sixth guy who comes through. Power play for Chicago. Nothing happens. Oh my God! I'm not liking this. Eight minutes left. Come on, boys. Power play. Late score and tie it up. Come on. And it's a oh I got Sami Vatanen. Vatanen is on this team. Where? I didn't see him in the scratch lineups I didn't see him on the team how the hell did he get in the lineup the Winnipeg Jets win the first two games unreal man so again Sergei Bobrovsky gives us a good game we have one goal four in seven periods basically six and a six and a few six and a few I was completely wrong about this prediction I thought this would be a goal scoring series we have one goal four in two games oh my god all right all right well, what the hell is going on here view lines what the hell is going on here? How do they have Sammy Votnin? We saw that blue line. They probably have like just a stack team now. They brought up like all these players from the AHL probably. So their forward core looks the exact same. Defensively, yeah, Vatnin's in there, but Dustin Bufflin isn't. So Bufflin was injured. He's on, so I mean, Jesus, we got to get something done right now. We lose two games with Dustin Bufflin injured. So Dustin Bufflin's not even on that blue line. Their best guy is in 84 overall. Josh Morrissey, Sammy Votnin is an offensive defenseman. And then these fuckers are holding down the team. A one-goal performance over seven periods with that piece of shit blue line. Oh, I'm getting frustrated. All right, all right, all right. We just went into Winnipeg. We went into Winnipeg. It was the whiteout. We couldn't see shit. All right, we don't like the snow. We're, just, we're back in Chicago. Come on now, boys. Let's go, all right? You're not in trouble till you lose on home ice. They got a, I'm saying it again, depleted, depleted blue line. Fucking score. All right, get some chances. Push them, skates. Come on, here we go. First period in Chicago in front of their home fans. Can someone step up? Power play. Now would be the time. Oh, my God. Who do they have on the power play? They're using an offensive defenseman to kill off the penalty kill, and it's working. Oh, my God. Nikolai Ehlers is going to score. Got swept out in the last, uh, last year in round number one. Get by Dallas this year. Are you telling me we're due for a second round sweep? For God's sakes, come on, Chicago. Second period. Let's, where's Patrick Kane? Where's Jonathan Taves? I know where Jonathan Taves is. Passing it to the other fucking team. There it is, fourth line, Walmart. Passed by Reed Boucher, baby. I'm calling. I don't care if he didn't get the assist. Uh, coaching IQ 1,000 right there. Beautiful. Power play for Winnipeg. Ooh, it's killed off. Sergey, I need you. Bob Roska, I need you to play like a stud right here, man. We need to win this game. We can't fall down 3 nothing to the defending Stanley Cup champs. We cannot do it. Sergey Bobrovsky, I need you. I paid you all that money. All right, from Russia with love. Just keep, get us out of this game with the win, please. 24 shots to 19 in favor of Winnipeg. Oh, man, I did not call this series right. I thought it would be offensive, and there they got us right where they want us, man. These tight games where those lethal forwards can score at any freaking time. We have forwards as well, but they're just not as lethal. Three minutes left. Are we doing another overtime frame? Ah! A minute yes we are all right boys so the second game you know this might even be better to go to the actual overtime frame because 39 shots to 22 getting absolutely dominated by the winnipeg jets here now you can make the argument that this is the second game out of three that went to overtime so you know theoretically we could be up to one very easily could be up two to one don't want to throw away their victory in game one but uh this is what i mean man this is way too tight, and they have way too many studs. Let's try not to take a penalty this time, and not try not to pass it to the fucking blue team. All right, come on, baby. So here we go, game three, home ice advantage for Chicago. I mean, you can make the argument that this is the series right here. If Winnipeg wins, they go up three nothing. If Chicago wins, they get back in, and they haven't lost on home ice. Centering pass. Patrick Kane couldn't get his stick on it, and here come the Jets. Here come the high-powered Jets, baby. Blake Wheeler into the middle, tries to take that shot. And Sergei Bobrovsky, he's going to smother it. Good job. Still, uh, he's wearing the Ice Dogs helmet. <laughs>
<laughs> Blake Wheeler, top 10 in hits. All right, so who do we got up there? Schmaltz versus Shifley. Come on, Schmaltz, win this face off. It's not Taves are out there, it's Schmaltz. What can he do? He's going to lose it clean to Shifley. Vatnin in, takes that shot. Bobrovsky stands up tall. Doesn't go down. And yes, Sergei Bobrovsky doesn't have his number uh, 72. I gave that back to, uh, what was it, Artemi Panarin. They both had the exact same number, damn it. And I had to give 27 to Yokoharju and 28 to Bachvist. Or the other way around. <laughs> One of them's got 27. I think it's uh, the other way around, actually. 27 to Bachvist, 28 to Yokoharju. All right, another defensive zone faceoff. Shifley won the last one. Come on, Schmaltz. And at least he's, yeah, all right, all right. He's, it's going to be a, a push faceoff. Wasn't a clean win for Winnipeg, but they still get it back. And here come the Chicago Blackhawks. Schmaltz up the left side. He's going to hold on to it. He's going to take it to the board, still hold on to it. And a horrible pass right there. He had multiple options off the rush. Instead, he loses it. Good job. Oh, in the middle, Blake Wheeler's going to load up, and he's going to rip it off the crossbar and in. And the Winnipeg Jets have a 3 nothing series lead. I just can't believe this, man. Our team is playing like absolute dog shit in this gameplay. I mean, what was Schmaltz doing there? He had the rush. He had so many opportunities to pass it. He holds it. He gets he gets rubbed off at the boards, and then they counterattack, and they have a wide open player in the slot. Wheeler, that's the guy you want to leave there. This is what I mean. A tight game, and that lethal stud can just go out there, and the captain rips it. It's a three nothing series lead here for the Winnipeg Jets. Unreal instant replay. I mean, what the fuck? Let's go back. It, it was just like uh, just like Jonathan Taves. Schmaltz, what are you doing, man? I mean, Bockfist breaks it. You got Patrick Kane right there. He's behind the defense. He's behind Shifley. Give it to Patrick Kane, you idiot. Why wouldn't you go to Kane right there? So Kane cuts. He's got to hold on. You also have to bring it on your left side. Pass it to him. Oh, no, I got this. I got this, guys. Everyone hold up. All right, now go to Debrinket. You just made the pass. Go drop back to him. He skates himself into the boards. Gets just gets uh, outplayed, and then where does he pass it to? Where does he pass it? Tries to center it to the middle of the ice. Great job, Schmaltz. Great fucking job. Unbelievable. They cut back. They go in. Wheeler. Uh, Patrick Kane. Yeah, Patrick. It was Patrick Kane's man. Patrick Kane went after the puck carrier. Two guys on uh, Votnin right there. They go back. Shifley over to Wheeler. Three guys back there. I mean, I don't know what the hell you guys are doing. Is it Dabrinkit? Dabrinkit's all the way back here. Wheeler, he's got a wide open shot. Just rips it off the crossbar and in. Well, there you go. Down 3-0. Two overtime losses. Fan-fucking-tastic. So, another game and another loss against the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, my God, man. The lack of offense for us. With their depleted blue line, it's just so frustrating, man. No goals in game number one, one goal in game number two, one goal in game number three. We're talking about two goals over three games with two overtime games in there. So what is that? What is that? 11 frames? 11 frames, two goals. Oh, my God, man. With that blue line as well. So it, it's frustrating. The good news is that, you know, there are a bunch of one-goal games. And that game two, was it an empty netter that made it the three, the third goal? So, I mean, you can make the argument that we're right there. We're right there with them. A team that just won the Stanley Cup last year. We're right there with them, but we just cannot keep up. I gotta blow my nose. Hang on. Of course, I get all congested towards the end of this video. Well, I'm hoping maybe it's not the end of the video, but uh, down 3 nothing against the Winnipeg Jets, more than likely... Not going too much further here in this round. So we don't really have much to lose anymore. Uh, the pressure is all on them. Uh, sure, we want to win game number four, but we're up against a team that is just better than us. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to try to load this team up for offense. Screw Schmaltz. We're going to put Dabrinkit up there, and we're going to put Artemi Panarin. We're going to re reunite Patrick Kane and Panarin, and we're going to put that playmaker alongside of him. Now, all the offense is on that first line. Jonathan Taves. Uh, we're going to put uh, Brendan Saad there with Taves and uh, Nemes Thanktonoff. And uh, Pajot on the third line. Schmaltz can actually play the... Which side can he play? He can play the left wing. Sure, that's fine. Because Pajot has the better face-off rating. I think at 81 or something. So he can stay right there. McGinn, Walmart, Boucher. I want to see what Dabrinkit, Kane, and uh, Panarin can do. And also Dabrinkit, Kane, and Panarin. Yeah, they're up there on the first line power play as well. Just can't get any offense against these guys, man. It's weird. It's like it's like the Winnipeg Jets, they, they simulate well defensively from their forwards, I guess. And also Connor Hellebuck. Because that blue line's not there, and they're still dominating me. It's not even like I, I've got one good game here. That's three games in a row. 
two goals for 11 periods, two overtime frames, man. It's just, we're absolutely getting uh, obliterated here by their defense. So, to bring it, Panarin and Kane. Kane and Panarin reunited. Now, if they start to score some goals, we may know our lineups for next season. Uh, may get a, a glimpse into what we want to do, but I really have no other cards up my sleeve here. We have no one in the AHL that's ready to go, 70 overall. We just need to uh, to load up and have our studs come through for us. Power play, please! Nothing. See what I mean? We just cannot score here against Winnipeg. So another first period where Sergei Bobrovsky plays well. Sergei Bobrovsky has played great this entire series. I'm not blaming him for this one. It's the lack of offense, man. The defending Stanley Cup champs, they know how to shut her down. So the first period, eight shots to six in favor of Winnipeg. Come on offense, man. Panarin, Kane, or Dabrinkit. I'm counting on one of you three to get this sucker done. Second period underway here in Chicago. Can we at least go out on the season with a win on home ice and then lose game five? That You know, that's at least something. The fans deserve a victory here in the playoffs. And there it is, Cal Yarncroft. Leave it up to the freaking third line. Schmaltz gets demoted to the third line, and all of a sudden he sets up Cal Yarncroft right there. And Sergei Bobrovsky doing his best, doing his absolute best. I mean, he's due for a bad game. He's had three great ones. He's on the brink of having four good games here to start the series. And we're down 3 nothing. I mean, that is just shitting on your goaltender, man. But third period, can we get him some insurance? There it is, Jonathan Tays on the second line. All right, there's the, uh, the routine is in place there. Come on now. On front of the fans, one last victory here in year number two. We know the future is bright. Bockfist, Yoka Harju, some AHL players. One more victory this season. Five minutes left. Yeah, baby! And Jonathan Taveser. He cost us game number one, which was which was big. When you look back at it now, I mean, yeah, we took that penalty. But Taveser with that huge turnover. And uh, if we win that overtime session, you know, we're one nothing in the series. It's a completely different series. So uh, it's good to see Jonathan Taves at least, you know, come through for us in a big way in that game. Gets that back, kind of. Evens himself out a little bit. But uh, still got a long way to go here, boys. So all the pressure is now on the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, they want to get it done right here on home ice. They don't want to have to go back to Chicago for game six. Because, you know, that's going to be a tough one again. And if you lose a game six, anything can happen in a game seven. So if you're up 3 nothing in the series, you want to get it done in that fourth, definitely that fifth game. Don't want to go in a six. So, boys, all the pressure is on them. We did get some offense there in that game. Uh, Jonathan Taves, the two goals late. But, uh... I have a feeling Sergei Bobrovsky is not going to be able to keep this pace up throughout the whole uh, uh, series here, boys. So I, I envision a game, if we're going to go the distance here, I envision a game where we're going to have to win like 5-4. You know, we're going to have to get that game where our offense helps out the goaltender. So come on, offense. I need them early, I need, I, and I need them often. Come on, boys. Let's go. In Winnipeg for game number five. A 3-1 series lead for the Jets. Power play early. And the penalty killers and Sergei Bobrovsky still playing great. Still playing great. The man back there. It's been fantastic. If there's one silver lining, one, one player that we can at least... Uh, be happy about here in this second round is Sergei Bobrovsky. He is showing that he's a great simulating goaltender. If we could just get that offense around him, man. Ah, uh, the time is ticking. He's still young enough. He's still got some years ahead of him, but god damn it. Just, I want it now. How can we not score on this blue line? The, the Winnipeg Jets power play goes nowhere for Chicago. And there it is, Brendan Sod on that second line. So all of a sudden, Namastankdanov, Taves, and Sod have been hooking up five on five. Power play for Winnipeg goes nowhere. Beautiful. Good job, Sergei Bobrovsky and the penalty killers. Come on, Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky, baby. Start chanting his name in the friggin' stands, boys. He's playing like a Conn Smythe Vesna winner right now. Uh, I probably just jinxed him, but whatever. Yeah, we need some insurance markers to bring Kit Panarin and uh, Kane, man. That first line, boys, I reunited you. I put you, well, not even reunited you. Put you together. All the forwards, get her done. All of a sudden, the second line's coming through for us. 12 minutes left. Can Chicago and Sergei Bobrovsky hold on for this victory? No, they can't. Blake Wheeler, another dagger right there in the slot. Who left them open? Four minutes left. Are we going to a third overtime game in this series? Yes, we are. All right, boys. Overtime has not been good to us so far. You got to think that the averages are going to even out, right? Two first games, they take them. Come on now. It's only, it's only fair that I get it. So here we go, game five overtime, series on the line. So here we go, game five in Winnipeg. We had the whiteout once again. We had overtime here in game one, and Jonathan Taves with a horrible turnover. What's going to happen here in game number five? Will the Jets move off? 
to the Western Conference Final for the second year in a row. <laughs> or with the Chicago Blackhawks. Put it in their own fucking net, you idiots! And now we have a defensive zone face-off because we had the puck. We couldn't just skate past the fucking net. Watch, Shifley's going to win it. Back to the point. going to find Wheeler off the crossbar and in again. Holy shit. Come on, Dabrinkit. Oh, my God, Wheeler. He's got it. Come on, Bachvis, skate. Skate your Swedish ass up there to bring it over to Patrick Kane. There you go. Kane's going to dump it in. I think it was offside, but we tagged up. We're okay. Panera. Oh, Kaner! <laughs> Patrick Kane! I can trust you! What a beautiful bastard he is! He snipped at his one, and we got ourselves a series, boys. All the pressure's on them. Now they got to come back to Chicago for game number six. Oh, baby. We got lucky there in overtime. What a turnover. Man, this is the series of turnovers in overtime. Jesus, who is covering Patrick Kane? Arguably the best winger in the world right now. You're just going to leave him wide open in the playoffs? I mean, this guy does nothing but score playoff overtime goals. Oh, my God. We got to look at that instant replay here. He went low blocker with it. What was it? Uh, a good forecheck there by Panarin. Maybe, uh, oh, Bufflin's back from his injury. A little too early there, Bufflin. Yeah, Panarin's on him. He, he was uh, it was like checking him. Was it a saucer? Let's see. That pass was supposed to go to line A. Oh, no. Or oh, was it supposed to go to him? Was it supposed to go to this guy? Oh, my God. I think it was EA Sports. What the hell kind of passing system is that? A horrible pass from Dustin Bufflin out to the middle. Patrick Kane wide open and oh, <laughs> low blocker, baby. It doesn't get any better than that. All of a sudden, I'm happy. And Sergei Bobrovsky... <laughs> a 962 save percentage in that game. He has had he has had five great games so far. How much further can this guy go? We need some fucking offense. Come on. All right, so game number five goes to Chicago, and we're going back to Chicago for game number six. This is huge. All of a sudden, this is a series. All of a sudden. And you know what? Shouldn't be surprised because, yeah, after the first three games, they were up 3 nothing. but, again, two of those were overtime wins. Overtime wins, you know, you flip a coin. Who's winning that? Uh, calendar. Um, but uh, the true MVP of this series has been Sergei Bobrovsky. We'd be nowhere without him. Our offense certainly has done nothing. I mean, no goals for. One goal for. One goal for. We got the three right there. Jonathan Taves too late, which was nice, finally. All right, but then one goal for. It's uh, the, the second in overtime doesn't count. That's the fourth frame. So you have... You know, you have three games where you have one goal for, one game where you got shut out, and another game where you got the three. Fine, but jeez, man, you see what I mean about Sergei Bobrovsky. He has no offense to work with. Now, I still see a game where we're going to have to win 5-4. If we want to get back in this, man, you cannot rely on Sergei Bobrovsky doing 960 seven games in a row. It's just not going to happen. There's going to be a game where they get like three in the first period, man. It always happens like this. You feel like you're getting back in the series, then boom, they dump on you. So offense, I fucking need you to step up. I'm sorry for swearing so much, but holy crap, are you guys due? All right? If, if we played uh, Winnipeg 82 games in a season right now, Patrick Kane would be on pace for like a 15-goal year. Let's go, Patrick Kane. It's time to step up and get a goal. And Panarin as well. Get a fucking goal. All right, so here we go. Game six in Chicago. 3-2 series lead for Winnipeg. The Blackhawks have done a great job to fight back, but they need to help out their goaltender. They need to score on Connor Hellebuck. First period underway. Come on, Chicago. Score a freaking goal for me, would you? Please, 10 minutes for your fans, for everyone watching in attendance. Eight minutes left. Six minutes left. Shots are even. Oh, here we go. We got a few there. Seven shots to four in favor of Chicago. End of the first period. And once again, look at Sergei Bobrovsky doing it for us, man. First period, no goals. Now, the good news is that we are out shooting them nine to four without a power play in there. So uh, we might. Uh, this might be one of those games where our team has just come to play. And they, again, all the pressure is on the Winnipeg Jets right now. It's like we planted the seed of doubt, and it's, it's coming true on front of them. They can't believe it. Come on, boys. Second period underway. Come on. Oh, power play for the Winnipeg Jets. And they kill it off. Good job. Another one. What the fuck you idiots doing, man? Play disciplined. Be patient. Skates. Use your skates. There it is, Patrick Kane. He's coming alive at the end of the series. Oh, oh my God. Fourth liner's got to score on Sergei Bobrovsky. What a shit disturber. Patrick Kane, though, that's a big goal for him. All right. All right. So we got the goal in overtime, and he got the goal in this game. So Patrick Kane is coming through at the end of the series, just like he did against Dallas. Third period, baby. <laughs> Third period. Tied up by ones. Or tied at ones. 
Series 3-2 for Winnipeg. Come on, boys. Force a Game 7. And then it's it's a good year. It doesn't matter what happens. We got the defending Stanley Cup champions to Game 7. Please, just get to a Game 7. I'm here in front of your fans. I already asked for this once in Game 5, but fuck it. I'm asking for it again. Or in Game 4. Or oh, rather, sorry. All right, here we go. Third period underway. Tied game. Oh, my God. Another power play. Can we get one, please? Fucking zebras. Spread it around. 15 minutes left. 13 minutes left. We got a 1-1 tie. No, Dmitry fucking Kulikov. Fucking Lemieux and Kulikov scoring on me. How? How is this fucking possible? Five minutes. Where's the offense? Where's the fucking offense? You gotta be fucking shitting me. Oh my god. The blue line is full of fucking hacks. Dmitry Kulikov and Brendan fucking Lemieux. The two goals. Where's my goals? Where's, where's Patrick Kane? Where's, where's, where's Jonathan Taves? Where's Doug? Keith, where's the Brinkett? Where's Panarin? Where's Sod? Where are these guys not scoring goals for? What the fucking hacks on Winnipeg getting the goals? And oh my god, they give me, they give me, they tempt me. They tempt me. They give me hope. They say, oh yeah, this will be a great series. We'll go to seven. And then fucking Brendan Lemieux and Dmitry Kulikov are the two guys to score past Sergei Bobrovsky. And the entire series, our fucking offense didn't do a goddamn thing to help out our goaltender. Now the whole series, man, we didn't have one game. One game where we were due for some offense. No goals. One goal. One goal. Three goals. Two goals late. That shit doesn't count. Those all Sergei. Shut out for him. One goal. One goal. Are you fucking kidding me? Four games one goal and a shutout what the hell is sergey supposed to do with those numbers unbelievable sergey go back to russia just retire chicago's full of a bunch of fucking bums who can't find a way to put the buck in the fucking net oh i'm pissed hey guys johnny here and thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video give us a like hit that subscribe button and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content we also live stream on twitch where i take days off my life for your entertainment Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Fernandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win, trip to the wild card. First inning.